Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Leandro. I'm 16 years old. And before I get started with my talk, I just want to thank you all for being here. I think that getting to talk in front of such a, an educated, smart audience is a responsibility just as much as it is a privilege. Responsibility in the sense that when you guys leave this audience, this room, this theater, I hope that you could, you have, I hope that you can leave with some kind of useful idea that you can play with, you can think about, that your time wasn't wasted, that your time was spent in a worthwhile way. And it's a privilege, like I said, because you're all such educated people. It's awesome that I get to have your attention and a chance to tell you about myself and a little bit about some of the things I think about. So like I said, I'm Leandro, I'm 16 years old, and I think that in these past 16 years, I have been very fortunate. I've been able to live in four different countries, and I've been able to experience four different education systems within those four countries. The first six years of my life were in Switzerland, and the next four were in Myanmar, four after that were in Egypt, and then now I'm here for my final four in Bangladesh. I was in the Swiss, then the French, then the British, and now the American school system. And one of the kind of funniest things that I was able to experience by being in four different school systems is that every single one told me a different person was the first person to summit Mount Everest. And the reason I was able to learn that humanity is capable of breaking through borders of space and time to allow four people to be the same person to do the same thing first is because my mom is a diplomat. She's worked really hard for these chances for me and my family to live abroad. I have to say that I'm really grateful for that. And it's great, right? Living abroad is an awesome, naturally enriching experience, just like you'd expect it to be. Except it isn't always that way for everybody. I've seen people, that is usually diplomats, living abroad without really you know, living abroad. Because the thing is that expat commodities are usually enough that you can stay within them until holiday time comes, and therefore not really experience the country that you're in. Fortunately, I would argue that my experience was not like that. My parents were big-time backpackers back in their day, so I, for them, it's really important to rough it a little, no matter where we are. Challenges are, you know, <laughs> challenges. Children are little sponges for information, and I'm really, really, really grateful for the cultural kind of know-how, that little bit of cultural know-how that I was able to acquire by growing up in all these different places. So anyway, why am I telling you about all this? Why am I telling you about myself and diplomats and growing up abroad? What's my point? Well, I'll tell you. Amongst other things, I think that my time abroad has taught me that no matter how hard you try, it's really difficult, if not impossible, to send an idea across cultures. Which is obviously a very important part of the diplomatic line of work, which is the one my mom works in. And an issue that I personally feel pretty strongly about. So first, from my perspective, I want to tell you what I think a diplomat should be, then I'm going to tell you what I think they are today, and then I'm going to tell you why I think that needs to change. Okay. So let's start by looking at it from this angle. I think the hallmark of someone who chooses to be to live abroad is their cultural adaptability, and the hallmark of someone who doesn't or can't is often their cultural inadaptability. So think about it this way if you want. If you go to another country and you leave the big tourist zones, the big tourist attractions, right, it becomes up to you to change so that you can fit in and be understood by those people, those locals that you are surrounded by. And if you want, we can put this on a smaller scale. So if you go to Thanksgiving dinner at an American household, and let's say you're a Latin person, just for the sake of general likability, you don't go to that American household for Thanksgiving and start observing Latvian traditions or something wild like that. Right? Yeah. You observe American traditions so that you can associate with and understand those people that you are eating with and spending that evening with. That's what the people in the American household will expect of you, and they're not just going to decide not to celebrate something that matters to them because you have not adapted to it. So if we can keep this, this sort of dinner table metaphor, why should one household, who otherwise spends almost all their meal times at the same table at the same time, suddenly change their meal times every time someone comes over? I mean, would you want your country to abandon its traditions and its cultures for every visitor that comes along? No, right? The whole point of someone eating at your table is so that they can experience your food, literally and metaphorically. So clearly, when communicating between dinner tables, we need a middle ground, people who can adapt. And I think that's what a diplomat should be. People who make a little bit of a sacrifice, right? who spend a long time away from family, from home, from the culture that they know best, and people that adjust and adapt so that they can be properly understood by and associate with others from other countries. So people who, when invited to your table for Thanksgiving dinner, adapt to and learn your culture whilst also giving you a taste of their crazy Latvian traditions. Makes sense. 
this kind of an idea. That seems kind of about right. That's what diplomacy should be. And the way that I see it, the way it is today, it's not. By the way, before we move on, I would like to clarify, I have nothing against Latvians. I'm sure they're all great people. Anyway, we've just established that an ideal diplomat definitely has to change depending on who they're talking to. But I think we can also agree that they have to have an extensive knowledge of their home country so that they may properly represent it in any discussions they have with others outside of it. And to me, those things are just simply impossible with the way we're doing things today. So take a Swiss diplomat, for example. I'm Swiss. They have to understand Switzerland and Swiss culture on the deep level of someone who comes from there, but then they also have to have a deep understanding of the culture of the, culture of the person that they are talking to so that effective communication may take place. So these diplomats require an otherworldly understanding, not only one, but two cultures. I want to ask a question. Is it possible for this to happen? Could anyone do this? Is it possible to learn multiple cultures to this level of depth? Maybe, except that in modern diplomacy, almost all diplomats live in countries for three to five year periods, which if you're curious is a number chosen, because three to five years is usually about the period of time where we start getting attached to people around us, and then attachment leads to bias, and then bias isn't a great thing for diplomacy. So let's just restate that problem that I've given you. Is it possible, not even just for a diplomat, but just straight up anyone, to learn and understand a new culture within three to five years? I think we can all agree, no, not really, right? We're international kids, we know how deep a culture goes. It's hard to learn a culture, especially in such a short period of time. And the thing is, it's even harder for diplomats, because con considering the life they live, where there is very little time spent immersed in their country of residence's culture, and very much time spent with high-ranking officials and laptop screens. Especially in a country like Bangladesh, there are so many issues and peoples and organizations and events and meetings to deal with. The workload is insane. I'm not even a diplomat, and I feel very confident telling you this, because like I said, my mom's one, and she works a lot. And on top of that, the people that I've been able to meet because of her field of work are impressive. I can tell you without exception or exaggeration that almost every single one seems to have a deeply impressive work ethic. And even if, even when, I've met those diplomats that stay within expat commodities, they still have towers of stuff to do. And free time is essentially a myth for a diplomat. Even worse, social relationships are really hard to get if they don't exist because some, of some kind of networking opportunity or some kind of official necessity. Okay, so to kind of recap everything I said, to put it as simply as I can, it is wildly difficult, not just for a diplomat, but for your average Joe, to learn and to take the time to f learn an entirely new culture before their three to five years are up. Or at least, that's been my impression of it. And regardless, you, don't, you can't be taking three to five years, because if you do, at that point, your time in that country is already up, right? Those three to five years, you're a diplomat during all of them. So if you take five years and you figure out that culture by the fourth somehow, that's already four years gone where you aren't communicating effectively. I mean, we're just thinking about average diplomats, people who live in these countries for three to five years, move on to another one, live fairly average lives when it comes to expatriate people. Think about more important diplomats, right? Presidents, prime ministers, ambassadors, vice presidents, they don't even get to be in these places for three to five years. They just go there and have a talk and come back and go somewhere else and it's, it's just difficult. It's clearly not sufficient. It's not enough time for there to be mutual communicate cultural understanding between all parties involved. And I think this is something that we undeniably need for effective communication. Okay. So in my personal opinion and in my experience and as the previous talk kind of illustrated, Today, change is coming a lot and fast, and communication is just extremely important if we want to get to a good place globally, especially with objects as dangerous as nuclear weapons and events as threatening as climate change surrounding us on all fronts. And honestly, I just don't think it's a good idea to be half-assing anything anymore. We need to get better communicating between cultures because we cannot afford misunderstandings. How? I think at its base, the answer is relatively simple. Give diplomats, ideally before they move to this country for 35 years, those who are hopeful of a career, the opportunity to learn and yeah, to learn this culture that they will be playing such a deeply important role in. Just give them a little bit of time in some kind of facility, maybe in a village in the country they're going to work in, a little town, somewhere where they have an opportunity to get to know really the people that they're going to be working with and for. 
So but when you invite that diplomat to your American household for Thanksgiving, they can be the ones to stuff the turkey. Thank you for your time, everybody. I've been Landro, and I'm still 16 years old. <laughs>